Good evening, everyone. Well, tonight's the night, step two in the artificial insemination process of this small herd of Dexter cattle I have here. Um, <clears throat> it's about 7.30 on Monday night, and uh, one week ago, exactly one week ago, Monday morning, the Cedars, the controlled internal drug release, was placed in the three breeding cows of this herd. And they had a shot of GNRH. And tonight, seven days later, they're gonna get the cedars pulled. So we're gonna remove the cedars on them and then uh, give a shot of prostaglandin, which we're using estromate. Hi, bud. <laughs> we're using estromate, uh, which pairs with Fertigil, which is the, um, the GNRH that we used a week ago. So <clears throat> this is step two, like I said, uh, uh, for a seven day synced fixed time AI with a cedar placement. So that's the protocol we're using. We're not in as big of a rush tonight, as big of a time crunch because the clock, the clock really starts when you pull those cedars. The fixed time in the fixed time AI, uh, uh, doesn't start until those cedars come out. And that's 60 to 66 hours after cedar removal. Um, buddy, this is not something you can eat. He probably smells the protein cubes. It's my secret weapon to hopefully get him up in the corrals. Jeez, old Pete's, dude. So yeah, 60 to 66 hours from the time of cedar removal uh, is when the actual insemination should be taking place. So like I said, it's Monday night. At 8, 8, 8 a.m., 8 o'clock in the morning, Thursday morning of this week, we're going to take them into the vet and get the actual insemination done. So that puts us, if I get them pulled at about 8 o'clock tonight, 8 o'clock in the morning, Thursday morning, puts us right at 60 hours. And the way my vet made it sound like, the closer you can actually inseminate to that 60-hour mark with good quality semen, high quality semen, um, you know, uh, proper handling, of the semen proper proper uh, AI technique, you just boost your chances of actually getting conception. If you can get that high quality semen in the reproductive tract closer to that 60 hours as opposed to towards the end of that 66 hour time frame. Uh, man, she's looking good. Look how glossy she looks. I know the sun's on her, but she is slick. But we're not in a huge rush tonight. Um, you know, we obviously want to get those cedars pulled uh, around that eight o'clock time frame, just to kind of get us in that that sixty hour window. But uh, if you know eight thirty, nine o'clock, whatever it is, before we get them up in there, and the cedar is pulled, we're still we're still in that window. So it's not going to be as stressful as it was last week placing the cedars, because that that starts the time. Obviously, the removal of the cedars all revolves around the time that you place the cedars. So it was pretty imperative that I got those cedars placed in these girls uh, right around eight o'clock in the morning a week ago, just so I didn't set the whole process back. So um, hopefully a little bit more relaxed. Hopefully they, hopefully they run through the system. Again, they were up in there a week ago. I could see them being a little more hesitant to come up to the barn. All right, let's get them out of the sun. Let's get them up into the shade. Let's get them in the trail. And then hopefully they can start kind of relaxing and calming down and we'll, we'll work them into the system. So let's see if they follow just by calling them here. Hey, girls. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. And it is hot out here too. So I was very happy uh, to have to wait until about eight o'clock to do this because it's, it's about 95 degrees. Temperature's only gonna go up over the next couple of days. I'm in shorts, which I never wear shorts, but it's just, it's hot. So it's not going to be a very long process, but the sooner that we can get them in the shade and calm down, run them through the chute pretty quickly, get them right back out to grazing, uh, the better. So come on, girls. One technique that I forgot to use this morning that doesn't seem to make a big difference right now. I used it last week when we were doing the insertion was I gave them a little bit of a smaller feed area for their for the night before knowing that they were going to be hungry they were going to want to move they were really going to follow me wherever because they didn't get enough to eat I totally forgot about that this morning and gave them their normal allotment 
but obviously they're still following me. All right, well, that went a lot better than expected. Come on, kiddos. Come on, girls. Well, it <clears throat> went a lot better than I expected. I actually got all of the girls up here except for the herd boss uh, actually in the mud lot. So I'm not even going to have to chase them up the trail. Now I'm going to have to split them off. It was actually pretty easy last week getting them in the trail and then walking down the trail and just bringing them one up at a time and then basically separating them and working them through the chute one at a time. I don't want them all to be running into the chute right now, obviously, because that's going to that's going to mess it up. So we'll see if this works or not, but I figured <clears throat> since they're in there, I might as well lock them up and not let them back in the trail. Of course, the herd boss, number one, turned around as soon as I tried to get behind her. She's smart enough to know when the corral panels are out and we're in that mud lot. Uh, don't, don't, don't let me get behind her because that usually means I'm, I'm closing her up. So um, she turned around and ran right back down the trail, but with everyone else up in here, she, we'll be able to get her in. So we got about 20 minutes yet and then we'll get started. you down.
Come on, Mom. Come on. Hey girls. Hey girls. Oh man, that went so much worse than I thought it was gonna go. Uh, number one, man, she's just, she's gonna be trouble. She uh, doesn't do anything she doesn't wanna do being the herd boss. And as you saw, she finally went in the chute but refused to get her head through the gate and so I had trouble giving that injection. Blew through three needles. What was happening was, and I don't know what, you know, what the camera picked up, but what was happening was, you know, I'd, I'd get that needle in her neck using a 20 gauge. So I don't think it was the prick so much, but the thing would then, she'd whip her head around because she wasn't, um, she wasn't in the catch. And then she'd see that dart sticking out of her neck. Um, and so that scared her even more. So she whipped around and I was afraid I was going to actually, you know, plunge the medication and sh that dart was going to come out and I was going to waste my only uh, two milliliter dose of that medication. So I was, I was, that was it. I didn't have any more medication after that. So I couldn't waste it. So I tried everything I could to get her head through the gate and get it closed on her. She wouldn't go. What I ended up doing, hopefully I did it right, I took a, uh, my last 20 gauge needle I had and I took it off of the syringe. And I basically, which was, this was the, the tactic I was gonna do originally, but you basically just like hold it in your hand and you tap, tap, and then plunge it. And I did that in a rump. And I'm not 100% sure, sorry, these little black bugs are killing me. I'm not 100% sure I, I went into the right area in a rump. I don't know if there's more than one place you can go in the rump, but. I think she was getting tired of standing there and I just tap, tap, plunge with just the needle in her rump. She didn't budge. And then uh, it was harder for her to see me come around back. And then I just took the syringe, screwed it into the needle and um, plunged, plunged the medication into her. So I don't know, you know, if she ends up open, if she ends up coming back into heat, uh, I, you know, won't be surprised at all just because of how tonight went. So I really don't want to use a hot shot you know, one of those electric cattle prods, I, uh, you know, pain association with that shoot just is never going to be a good thing. Even if it's only one time a year that they're going through it. So I really don't want to do that, but I don't know what else to do. If anyone has any suggestions on anything else you can do to try and get a cow to go forward, I tried the tail. I grabbed her tail and she was backed up against the gate pretty good so it was hard to get her tail up but make it so they'll move forward because it's uncomfortable for them but she just flat refused to move so if anyone has any other ideas that doesn't involve any sort of you know pain whipping electricity anything like that let me know i'm getting them moved to the front pasture i set up a lane they're grazing their way down right now um they're gonna have a pretty large area i'll show you here in a second they're gonna have a pretty large area for the next couple days, just because this is gonna be really easy for me to get them out of here and back into the, the the lot up there to load them in the trailer in two days. And it's actually working for me for, for two reasons. This will be the area that the chickens are running in. So uh, the second batch of chickens uh, are in the barn. They're in the brooder. They're getting ready to go out to pasture here in, in about a week or so. Um, I really needed to mow this all down. It's very overgrown. Um, the pastured broilers don't do great when the grass is super long. So uh, instead of just mowing it for no reason, I'm going to run the cows through here for two days, let them take everything they want, everything they can, uh, and then move them out of here and mow. All right, we got to chase the cows. I'm losing sunlight and breath. Holy cow. <laughs> we got to chase the cows down into the strip that they're going to be in for the next couple days, the chunk, fill their water, clean the chute because there's cow manure everywhere including all over me um and yeah if you guys have any questions about what you saw sorry this video is kind of scattered but once again things didn't go as planned and uh 
the first thing that suffers when that happens is my ability to talk to the camera and try and get it all on footage. So I apologize that this was just kind of a scattered video, but we'll talk to you guys later. They're definitely happy to be left alone and eating. Believe me, I'm happy to be leaving them alone. Done with these things for the night.